Hi guys, welcome back to another podcast. Um, we are joined by wonderful two hosts today. Amazing. Zenya. Beautiful. Izzy. And me, Michelle. <laughs> um, we are going to be diving back into Philippians 2. If you guys haven't already checked out Philippians 1, where we did a whole Bible study, please go check that out before you um, listen on to this one. But I think what we'll do is ask you guys some questions on the streets. So let's roll to that clip. Let's go. What does humility mean to you? I think humility is recognizing who God is and who you're not. If you look in scripture, you begin to see how God is all powerful, God is holy and God is love. And in that, and the more of him you know, you begin to see um, you're not that, and then you need him. So if someone is so big and you're nothing, you're depending on him with, I guess, all of your being, so. I think it's a case of trying to be as open-minded as possible. I, I think there's a weird irony wherein if you're close-minded, you will never question that you're not open-minded, right? And so you won't actually realize that you're failing to, to act with humility. So I, I think it's just trying to trying to keep that in mind. I say being humble more like it's just keeping to yourself, but inspiring other people instead. Mm. Or like not bringing people down if you can't do something that they can. I think being humble is just very necessary. I feel like people are just so selfish nowadays that they just don't take into consideration other people. Feeling, it hurts a lot, but I feel like you have to grow out of it because you have to understand that if someone's trying to humiliate you, they have the problems and it's not you, so you have to be the bigger person. So I think that's just what it is. Yeah. Well, it's all about being humble, I guess. Um, taking pride in what you have, understanding that I guess us for starters are in a lot better, in a much better position than a lot of people around the world and kind of appreciating that and not asking for more. I think it's also about being grateful, uh, grateful for what you have, but also confidence in what you have. Uh, not always reaching for something unattainable, but being confident that you can get where you need to be with what you already have. Like they're a kind person, like they care for people. It's just, you're not like showing off and you're just very like, you're at peace with your life and all this. I don't know. I think let's dive straight into Philippians 2 and yep. start reading. I am reading NIV, I think. Whatever I'm reading from my phone want. because I'm holy. And which, what, what are you reading? <laughs> NIV. <laughs> oh, I'm in LT, I feel left out. That's okay, another translation, it's good to have. Let's go. Let's go. Imitating Christ's humility. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, by being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Mm. Wow. Gosh, there's so much in there, isn't there? Yeah. Right. What an amazing piece of scripture, eh? That's yeah. my input. I think the thing that stands out the most for me is this theme of, like, humility. Yeah. yeah. Um, And I guess it kind of mirrors, like, both of the first parts. So the part where it talks about, um, like, if any of you belong to Christ, if any of you love, if any of you are compassionate and all this stuff, then it says um, you must have the same attitude as Christ. So it basically outlines what Christ was like. Mm. Like he um, he comforted people with his love. 
he was tender and he was compassionate and um he was loving um and he had a purpose and he helped others like find their purpose and all that mm. stuff and then it goes into actually what it was like for him to do that which was coming down from heaven um coming onto earth and emptying himself and dying mm. on the cross so i think it's interesting how like with philippians even with what we talked about last week but you see the attributes of what it means to be in christian community and what it means mm. to to be humble but then here it's like this is how he did it so you actually get to see what how we're supposed to live yeah. and how christ did it yeah um which is so helpful because sometimes it can be like the bible tells us to love one another and you just don't know how mm. but then this shows actually no the humility is where love is found um mm. which is amazing absolutely mm. the humility of jesus is just so radical yeah like i think i've been dwelling on this for the last maybe like a month or so actually mm. of that like have the same mindset of christ who being in very nature god did not consider equality with God. Like that is crazy. Mm. Like this is the same God who we see through the whole Old Testament, whose glory was so great that people couldn't even enter like the, the temple, whatever. Do you know what I mean? His glory was um, incredible. And this is that glory like in flesh, like that is God. Mm. And instead of being like, I am the almighty powerful God, he was like, mm. actually, I'm coming as a baby and I'm gonna be, looked after and raised by these humans that have disobeyed me for so long and I'm going to wow. be their servant and they have betrayed me and they're going to continue to betray me yet I am their servant I'm the almighty God yet my love for them is so big that I'm going to allow them to mm. love raise me and then and then all the whole died on the cross and all of that as well which is just his humility is just it's you can't grasp it mm. so in the saying the fact that like in your relationship with one other, one another, have the same mindset as Christ. Mm. It's like, pff, gosh, that's tough. Like that is mm. tough. Where he is literally God, yet it's like I'm going to be a baby, and yeah. that's how I'm going to come into this world, and how I'm going to save you is being a baby and being your servant. Mm. And I think he sets the standard so well because even what I'm thinking of now is like in Genesis when God creates man, like Adam is the first son of God, like the first human being to be created. But yeah, the way that sin entered the world was the fact that Adam was like, oh, I want to eat from the tree of good and evil mm. or like knowledge because I want the same knowledge that God has. So for Adam and Eve, they wanted to be, like they wanted to cling on to that same, I guess, level as God. Yeah. Whereas with Jesus, who is literally God, he didn't consider equality with God as something to cling to. And I think it's so crazy because Adam walked so closely with God in the garden, like they, they were literally mm -hmm. with each other all the time. And yet that wasn't enough. No. But yet Jesus sits in the Trinity, like God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, they sit together. They made the world, like God in his entirety made the world. And yet for Jesus, he was like, I can, I can actually separate from this mm. for the sake of man. And I just think that level of sacrifice, it's hard because even as human beings, like, sometimes I don't want to do things that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I don't want to inconvenience myself if I'm comfy for the sake of someone else, but actually we're called to do that. Yeah. And if Christ can do it, um, and it talks about like he gave up his divine privileges and took mm. the humble position as a slave or in other translations, it says a servant. Like if Christ can do it, how much more should we? Because he did it for us. And it's just so, oh, it's so challenging. It's, it's so profound. Like yeah. just back to, just going around the whole the humility of christ like he where it says in verse six who being in very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be used to his own advantage like he he is god mm -hmm. but he didn't like let that be like where he's just then put on the pedestal or like he knows he's he'll be on the throne right but then he instead like decides to choose humility and choose to serve us and i think that's like an amazing like um example of leadership because like yeah you can also dive into how like being a good leader is by serving first mm. is by serving it's mm. by loving others it's by putting others um others above your own interests like that's such a hard thing to do because especially in our generation and our like day and age people are always talking about oh no but like i'm striving i'm doing this for myself like yeah 
self-love and like doing all these things for like my own career da 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 yeah it's all good in like boundaries when you then see others first and then you like continue to do what you need to do like putting other people's needs above yours is hard to do but you can see like Christ has done that very like he's a very good example for us for that and to follow him and and like I think it's just so profound like there's a reason behind it because with humility not only does that serve us because that that's like God teaching us like how to love others well but also it's being an example to others like so others can see like this is what Jesus has done that oh my gosh maybe I should follow that and like let's say you're in a workplace and it's not in a Christian environment people Mm. are gonna then question why they like treating me so well because like everyone else around them might be thinking about like themselves and their work but really like if you're the one Christian in the workplace that um does the opposite and puts their needs above your your own they're gonna question they're gonna question that Mm. and that's just only gonna lead to the Lord so I think it's it's just so amazing yeah yeah I think it also shows how how much God cares about humility and how important it is um because in verse nine it says therefore God exalted him to the highest place Mm. we're actually even talking about like what you've just said and also you're talking about like Adam Mm. like Adam wasn't humble he wanted to know good and evil and therefore curse destruction bad (laughs) where actually Jesus here he is humility Mm. therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and heaven and on earth like that's Mm. the power of humility that's how much it's important to God that's how much in our workplace in our whatever we should humble ourselves because how much more great if we're not humble we can yeah make ourselves feel great and probably be quite ambitious and something all ambitious bad but you know what i mean if we can put ourselves high above other people but then yeah if we actually humble ourselves then god exalts us to yeah. high places and We're like not with jesus but whatever yeah. yeah honestly like it's insane and like in matthew 20 16 I know I'm kind of like going into different scriptures, but no, it says do. the last will be first and the first will be last yeah. in the kingdom of God. Like where are we storing our treasures? Is it on this earth? Like are we wanting affirmation from other people? Are we um, striving for acceptance, um, performing and like doing all these things for other people to tell us about ourselves and to like, yeah, are we doing that? Or are we storing our treasures in heaven and serving other people and loving others and knowing that that will ultimately serve us when we're in the kingdom of heaven. Like just like the last yeah. will be first and the first will be last is just also kind of relevant, I think. Having a, a longer kingdom mindset. 100% kingdom mindset. On DP. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to scripture hop as well, but what you said reminded me of um, Galatians 1.10 uh, when Paul writes and he says, obviously I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God, if pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Max. Um, and yeah. I think beautiful when it comes to being humble, I love what it says here, where it says he humbled himself in obedience to God in verse mm. eight of Philippians two. Mm. Like there, there is such an intrinsic link between humility and obedience. Mm. And mm. I think if anyone's listening or watching and thinking, okay, but what does it actually practically look like to be humble? Yeah. Like, how do I do that? It's by obeying God. Like Christ obeyed God to the point of death. Yeah. That is the true ultimate way to be humble because humility has no self-interest. It's not nothing to do with you. Yeah. It's all to be it's all for God. Um, and people will see that. Like I have a friend, um, she told me this yesterday at Bible study, but she said that she works in a primary school and she works as like a teaching assistant. And one of her colleagues said, like, you're the first TA that's coming that we just, Mm. we like and we we gel with. (laughs) Like, all the other TAs, like, there's been something about their aura that we just, I just don't click with. But with you, like, I don't know, you just have such a, like, an inviting, inviting presence. Mm. And when she was telling me this, she was like, because when I go to work, I don't just see it as, oh, a job that I have to do or to, to get money. But actually I see it as serving. I see it as, okay, how can I help these other teachers and how can I help these children? And she said there's a level of humility when she goes to work because, you know, you wake up early in the morning, you're so groggy, tired, like 
even children can say things as, to a teacher that can like upset them or other colleagues, but she looks past it and she sees it through the lens of Christ. Mm. And she's like, okay, if Christ was humble, how much humble do I need to be yeah. when speaking to these other teachers yeah. and speaking to these children? Because ultimately as a believer, we want to show Jesus in everything that we do, not just like you said, um, in like Christian jobs, but also if you're working a job that's in a secular, secular environment, yeah. like how, having that mindset to hold on to can be difficult. But that really encouraged me. Like actually, if we obey God in all things, we ultimately will be humble. Yeah. Mm. We won't have to strive for it. We'll just end up doing it. Yeah. It's such a countercultural thing, isn't it? Like Christ's example was very, very like opposite to to this world. It's a picture of humility that um is so self sacrificial and like not self serving. And like, n it doesn't really matter about status or like, um, like fame or whatever. Like it's, it, he just doesn't, he literally just lays that down and he doesn't care about that. And he puts the first person, the he puts the person first. I don't know what you guys think. Like, what do you guys think like humility is in our day and age and how can we like best walk in humility, do you reckon? Yeah, I think like you've mentioned bits of it already. I think it's, um, it's very countercultural. And I think as Zem was already saying about like using Jesus as that example, it does look like obedience. It does look like sacrifice. It does look like that, that want we have for status or power or um, being recognized, being known, being, and they're not necessarily always bad things, but actually it's like, that's, that's not what we're living for. Yeah. That's not, we don't, mm. I don't, we shouldn't care about, our power mm. we'll let we'll let god raise us in places if he wants us to raise places but that shouldn't be our focus shouldn't be our aim actually humility is being like my eyes are on god it's not about it's not about what i want it's not about yeah like we exactly what you said it's, it's sacrificing that that status sacrificing that power sacrificing what people think about us not mm. being afraid of people trying to shame us or whatever whereas i like, know we we aren't living for ourselves yeah um, and that looks different for everyone. Um, but it, I think it, it comes a lot from obedience. It comes a lot from sacrifice. It mm. comes a lot from knowing that we are living for, for God and his kingdom and not, not for ourselves. Mm. I also think it's helpful to think about the context that this is also written in. Mm. It's Paul writing to the church in Philippi where um, they're trying to work out what the church looks like mm. and they, they've got some issues going on and a lot of it about disagreements or disunity and this is the context of where he's writing this which is talking about how can we be united by looking at Christ's example mm. and that's where it talks about the humility and talks about actually when when we focus on ourselves that's where disunity comes and that's where the church will will fall apart basically mm. so actually if if we think of that and think about as a as a body of believers how much we can be united just through having community, mm. not community, through having humility and yeah. community, uh, but through following Christ's example and the power of that. Like we should, we should really take that into our own church communities as well. Oh, guys, that was so good. Um, I'd love to talk more about that, but this is a this is a big chapter. Yeah, this is a big boy. Um, I actually love this next part. Um, I don't know what your Bible says, but mine says "Shine brightly for Christ." Oh wait, what translation oh. are you I'm gonna I'm gonna swap? NLT. I it's... might swap on my phone. Okay. Oh, I just persuaded the swap. That's crazy. NLT. I'm going to put it back to NIV as soon as you finish reading, but go. <laughs> okay. It's NIV says... gang. <laughs> Do you remember that last podcast? That where was you close. We didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about you it. You tried to spot who and they aired. Yeah. Me, I, the guy aired. That yeah, that's close. crazy. I've actually gone immediately back to NIV if I'm uncomfortable. Anyway. Oh, wow. Okay, go cool. on. Okay. It says, dear friends. You always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining mm. <laughs> and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain, 
and that my work was not useless. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice and I will share your joy. Wow. Paul just has a way with the words, like she really does. That finesse. Oh, she was like quite different to the and I, not like quite different, but I think it was it was nicer to read an NLT. It was. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it was nicer. I am an NLT stan. Anyway, um, stan. no, it's great. I think that the Philippians two fifteen bit really just points out to me, so that no one can t- can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Mm. Like we want to be people. What? There's another part of scripture. I'm scripture hopping again. But it's like you want to be blameless in front of people so then they will have nothing to say against you. Yeah. When you start complaining and grumbling and like arguing and like being annoyed at the suffering, the pain that you're going through, you just, you're then focusing, you're putting the attention and focus on yourself then on God, on mm. Jesus, on his character, on who he is. So I think there's a lot of truth. Obviously, it's the Bible. Do everything without complaining and arguing. There's a reason for it to to keep us in freedom and living in that freedom and, like, not so self-absorbed, not the attention on ourselves, but really on the goodness and, and the glory of the Lord. Um, but I don't know what you guys think. I love it. I think it links to verse 13 where he says, for God is working in you, giving mm. you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Mm. And when you're talking about suffering, I'm currently reading Job in the Bible. And if anyone has read Job, (laughs) you don't know suffering until you read that book. Um, This guy, (laughs) literally, when I say lose everything, like in our society, we probably think losing everything is like losing your friends, maybe like getting demoted at work. This guy didn't even have a job. In fact, he didn't even have family at this point. Mm. Had nothing to his name. Even his skin was falling apart. His whole his whole body was even failing him. And yet in all that time, he never like stuck it on God or he never like denounced God or attacked God in his character. But he was just like, Lord, I'm humble. Like if I've messed up, I'm sorry. Like yeah. God, help me get out of this mess. Like you're so worthy and you're so great. And who am I? Like, and he, he just goes into this whole, mm. like just pages and pages and pages of humble outpouring. And when I think of like times where I've gone through hard times, whether it was like waiting to be accepted into my dream uni and being rejected from a uni that I really wanted to go to and how that really crippled my confidence, actually like God has given us the desire and the power to do what pleases him and what pleases him is persevering. Mm -hmm. What pleases him is making it through the other side without, like you said, complaining or bashing God or beating up his character but actually like being obedient and going back to the humble thing and trusting God that he Mm. will bring you through. Cause like that verse in Philippians one, where it talks about um, like he that started a good work and you will carry it out. Like I genuinely just don't believe as a follower of God, as a Christian, that God will bring you to a certain point and just leave you there. Like he will see you through, like he will give you the perseverance to get through. And so where it talks about God is working in you, like you said, rather than focusing on what you're going through, actually work us on, focus on who's in you, like who Facts. is working in you. It's God, it's mm, Christ. So good. And that should give you the comfort. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and like you saying that, I'm also going to scripture hop again, um, where Let's it says go. Psalms 23, where it's like, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Like mm. God will, he is faithful and he will carry me out to the other side of that dark valley, the suffering, the pain. Mm. and choosing to focus on his glory and his character and who he is and to rejoice in like pouring your life out like a liquid offering to god like it says in philippians 2 17 like there's beauty and there's joy and there's freedom in that and like i feel like even in my personal life when i'm going through something difficult and like it's taking a lot of headspace a lot of heart space and it's and it's just really burdening me I feel like when I shift my focus on the Lord and his character and knowing that his like his promises, it stands time mm. and like no matter what, I will be fine. When I focus on that instead of the struggles and the pain mm. that I'm going through, it just helps lighten that burden on my shoulders, I find. Yeah. I was going to ask you guys a question because it talks about in the scripture to living like living like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. 
um, how do you guys find maintaining your relationship with God and maintaining like, okay, not complaining, not arguing and all this stuff, even though there are people in your lives that probably aren't Christian or don't hold these, these same values? Like, does that ever conflict? Do you ever like feel, oh gosh, I'm going to end up compromising here? And like, how do you guard your heart against that? I think I'm going to twist your question a little bit. Sorry, not sorry. Right, um, go for it. I've just been looking at these verses as you guys were talking and like do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure in mm. without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Like do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you, like that's, they're linked. And I think it can be so easy to, very hypothetically be like, oh, what is this like focus on God when like bad things happen? But like, actually this is quite practical. Mm. Like don't grumble or argue. Mm. And that is difficult when there's, you know, warped and crooked generational difficult people around us or whatever. Mm. But actually it's a conscious decision. I don't think I'm much of an arguer, but I definitely can be a bit of a grumbler and a complainer because you know what? Sometimes life is difficult and you do need to process, but there also is a point where like, okay, processing has stopped now. <laughs> right. You are, you're actually, you're, and who are you grumbling to? Who are you complaining to? Mm. And you can catch yourself. And this is talking about the power of not grumbling, not arguing, yeah. thinking about that u unity, thinking about the humility, thinking about now us being blameless and look like searching for that righteousness and that purity before God. And it, it's talking about the power of our words. And so I think this is almost your question, but not quite, but actually being very intentional even with those around us, of when when we pick up ourselves starting to grumble, starting to complain, it's like, stop. It's like, actually stop. And I think that's what I was talking to you about. I'm doing this thing in my prayer journal at the moment where every day I'm just doing a page of thanks and praise mm. every day. And it's actually quite difficult. I very quickly went up, but this is really tough. Like, can you just step in here? It's like, actually, no. Like, actually just thanks and praise. I'm not, I'm not grumbling. I'm not going to complain, even though I really want to. And I'm sure... I'll see the fruit of that. And I'm mm. sure other people will see the fruit of that too in this um, warped and crooked generation where actually it was like, actually, this is really tough, but I'm going to praise your name and, and and raise your name like Job did because mm. his friends weren't great. His friends were the worst. If I tell you about Job's friends, yeah, I was vexed reading that book. I was like, your friends are <laughs> dead. Fr his friends are literally like, what, well, what have you done to make God do this to you? And you know what annoys me, yeah? At the beginning, I was like, oh, these friends are so nice. Like, they sat with him. They and, care. Like, well, he was mm. like going through it. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, but if we look at your life, Job, um, there were times where I did it. I'm like, right, be your own friend sometimes. Like, be your own. But um, what you were saying about like catching yourself in the moment of mm -hmm. grumbling, bruv, when I tell you that is literally the hardest thing. Like, you know, there's yeah. certain relationships in your life where you just argue with that person. Is yeah. that as a whole, I'm not an arguer. No. Like, I can, I can lay things down. But Ray, when it comes to me and my brother, shout out to my brother, I love you, but <laughs> sometimes we just argue that, like, but also it's like you live in the same house, like you always live on top of each other. So if you're in that close proximity, it's gonna be easier for you to argue with that person or like things will get under your skin or whatever, whatever. But um, recently over the last, I'd say like maybe four or five months, God's really challenged my heart to the point where like every time I, we'll have a conversation and it feels like it's gonna to reach to a point of an argument. I feel like the Holy Spirit is like, is this worth it? Yeah. And for me, it's, he's not a Christian and I want him to know Jesus because I know what Jesus did for me. But if I act and rise up in conflict, that's not actually gonna allow Jesus to shine. And so God's like to me, what is more worth it? Winning this argument or winning a soul? And I'm like, okay, winning a soul is probably more. Yeah, okay, fine. No, it's, probably, it's, it's probably the right option still. Um, so let me not argue. Yeah. But in those moments, that is when you have to be humble. Because actually yeah. this is not about me. It's not about my point being proved. It's not about like him understanding what I'm saying. Actually, no, I want him to know that I hear yeah. him because God hears him. Right. And that's hard. And my gosh, that's does so it take profound. a lot of humility to not crum crumble, not grumble or complain. That's fine. So much humility. I mean, like we are called, called to love, right? And like, yep. whilst you're speaking then, I got the scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, four, where it's like, love is patient and kind. Mm. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way, it is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. 
does not rejoice by injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. We are called to love others. Yeah. And like that takes some humili- genuine like humility from our side to be able to love others that really have wronged us or like really are annoying. And like we just want to grumble. We want to complain about the situation. We want to like tell them how bad they are and like, but like we really should it's like an upside down kingdom thing like it's like we do the complete opposite of what we feel in the moment so it takes humility it genuinely does like Mm. strength as well courage and boldness to like trust in the lord take faith in him be like you know what i'm gonna choose to love these guys by not grumbling and complaining about it but really just laying it down and bring it bringing it to the lord I personally find it really difficult bringing things to people because I feel like I might be gossiping about other people um, if I do. And mm. I'm like, I really don't want to do that. So then instead I like choose to go to the secret place and tell God and like really vent to God and like ask for his like input. But um, like it's shown around the whole Bible. Like there's a, tons of like um, books in the Old Testament, like the Psalms and stuff where well, that's the case and it's a beautiful act of faith when when you bring things to god i think that's a fantastic example of what we should do and i think i struggle with that a bit but we see that in throughout the bible in in psalms and jeremiah and all these places where these people are bringing their complaints to god instead of grumbling or whatever to other people and that's actually a huge step of faith and a huge act of faith to actually bring it to god and so that's amazing when you do that moving on to the next part of the scripture the timothy and a pub <laughs> you got this you got this queen <laughs> i hope in the lord jesus to send timothy to you soon that i also may be cheered when i receive news about you i have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare for everyone looks up for their own interests not those of jesus christ but you know that timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father he has served with me in the work of of the gospel i hope therefore to send him as soon as i see how things go with me and i am confident in the lord that i myself will come soon but i think it is necessary to send back to you epaphroditus my brother co-worker and fellow soldier who is also your messenger whom you send to take care of my needs for he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill indeed he was ill and almost died but god had mercy on him and not on him only but also on me (laughs) to spare me sorrow upon sorrow therefore i am all the more eager to send him so that when you see him again you may be glad and i may have less anxiety so then welcome him in the lord with great joy and honor people like him because he Mm. almost died for the work of christ he risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me shucks mm. i read that pretty bad but they did great isn't um, it crazy that these are like actually real people yeah like, but also i love the way that paul writes even in other books like first corinthians romans paul uses like examples of real life situations and people that mm. the people reading the letters would actually recognize rather than speaking in this language that's just like what are you talking about yeah but he starts off by saying okay guys i know you guys are having disagreements or whatnot but actually, how do we become unified? Through humility. Let me show you that humility. Look at Jesus's life. Then he brings it back to them and he's like, okay, so are you complaining? Are you mumbling? And then he goes, so now look at two people that you know in your community or people you've heard of. And now look at how they model humility. Like he's very, he just lays it out so well. Like with um, Timothy, he, isn't he the same guy that writes like first Timothy, second Timothy? Like he's mm. one of Paul's friends. Um, and he was like really, really young and in here it says like a son with a father he has served me with preaching the good news and the fact that like he was able to display humility because he would go out into communities and talk about the good news even if he was scared about being young or scared that what would people think of me Mm. he laid down his desires for status like we talked about before like his desire to be looked at a certain way and said actually that doesn't matter what matters is spreading the good news Mm. And that the other people in the Church of Philippi need to take a leaf out of his book and do the same thing. Like, don't worry about how people will look at you. The most important thing is is preaching the gospel, mm. which we talked about um, with Philippians 1 as well. Yeah, it's like, facts. what is more important? How the message is being preached or the fact that the message is just getting out there? Yeah. I think it's also so clear how Paul actually loves these people. Yeah. Mm. And thinks really highly of them. Yeah. And that is just, they are just real people and they're now in the Bible forever. And that's beautiful. Um. And just 
how he's proved himself and how he's served and your yeah, your fellow soldier, your your messenger, those that I knew you care like these are real people. I just mm. it's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is like it's a continuous teaching as well, isn't it? Like even throughout his letters, just at the end, yeah, on twenty nine where it says, To welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. He's yeah. like he's setting an example, like love, um I don't want to say his name again. I can't say it. <laughs> but like <laughs> to like serve him and honor honor the people like you are with this man. Yeah. It clearly has so, some significance because his name is now in the Bible. In the Bible. Well, so. he's the one that sent he was the one that went to prison um to visit Paul and came back with this letter and the fact that Paul says that he risked his own life. Like he got sick and he, this guy was, thought he was going to die. Yeah. And yet he still was able to find strength in God to get through it yeah. and to come back with um, Paul's letter to this community that Paul speaks very highly of and he, mm. and he loves them. I think it's, I think it's something like in, it's so meta because we, the whole thing is about Christ and Christ being humble. But yet the only reason why they had this letter was because somebody else was willing to be humble to go out yeah, and go wow. to Paul in prison Thanks. and risk everything. Um, just so Paul could then write back to this community. Wow. It's just, ra every, everything is just wrapped in humility. Like Paul is humble, Epaphroditus was humble, Jesus was humble. It's like, it, it becomes more tangible Yeah. when you think about how it was written yeah. and who, why we have this. It's just screaming humility. Yeah. Be humble. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Just like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sit down. Be, Be humble. humble. <laughs> So Anything dead. else you want yeah. to say? <laughs> Be humble. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like after we're done, I'll think of something. But that's the Bible. Like every time you read it, you get something. That's true. And when you think about it, then God will give you something else. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, I should have said that. But you're like Chambalize. I should have said that. <laughs> you just wanted to throw that in. That's crazy. <laughs> you just wanted to say that. I did. What a joy. Philippines 2 has been amazing. Guys, go get your Bible and do your own commentary and some research. But we will be diving into Philippians 3 next week. So tune in for that. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Bye.